We are not economic illiterate running this country, Mr. Acting Speaker. 2015-2016, uh, the unholy alliances of the Office of Prime Minister and Central Bank so Kina artificially pegged. Uh, Governor Baird finds comfort on the other side. He should be more on this side, uh, simply because of focus on rural economy to be unleashed. Uh, we gave, for instance, the support for the 300 million Kina European Union partnership program in East Pacific. Whilst you are giving some relief to 100,000 Papua New Guineans who are working, I remind the Prime Minister that we have 14 million Papua New Guineans, at least in that country. So the question from the opposition is, what are you doing in terms of uh, monitoring and, in fact, merging fiscal and monetary policies so that we can work these two together to bring inflation down, whilst appreciating the fact that inflation is increasing around the world? Thank you. Can the Prime Minister enlighten the people of this country if the government is seriously looking at biometric voting system in 2027 national general election and all elections thereafter? Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Honourable Member for Solicitor Yangumu. Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. My question this morning goes to the Minister for Police. In 2012, when the current Prime Minister was the then Minister for Finance, <clears throat> he wrote twice to the then Secretary of Finance asking that a certain law firm be paid outstanding legal fees. In the first letter of 3rd October 2012, uh, he said this, and I quote, he said a number of things asking for payment, but pertinently he said, and I quote, you are directed to request the department you are directed to request the Department of Treasury for a special warrant, a special warrant to be released to settle the said lawyer's legal bills. Then in the said same letter, he issued <clears throat> a... Honorable uh, Member for Cincinnati, that's a point of order, Prime Minister. I think standing order doesn't prevent matters that are before court and matters that are submitted as evidence before court. I may be wrong, but uh, I'm just putting that to you. This, this is a matter that is now presently before court. Uh, Honourable uh, Member for Sensenay Yongumul, I think the Prime Minister's... Uh, I have, may I reply to that before you make a ruling? Honourable Member, no, I would not. I'll make a ruling from here. Speaker, I'll confirm this with clerk, clerk. You cannot suppress a legitimate uh, question of the race. Uh, Honourable Member, may you re I'll ask you to resume your seat and I'll make a decision on a point of order made by the Prime Minister. Honourable Member, the point of order raised by Prime Minister is in order. Yeah. Being informed by Clark that this matter is before court, we cannot discuss it here on the floor of Parliament. So I will, ru I will rule that question out. The Prime Minister is not in court. The Honourable Member for Thalassia. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker, Lord Luxavo, and all people of Talasia. My question without notice is uh, directed to the Prime Minister. And the Minister for Constitutional Office can take note as well. Deputy Speaker, my question relates to the integrity and transparen transparency of our electoral system, which have proven in many times to be compromised and abused. The a number of uh, election results that are challenged in the court of dispute pretense, significantly expose the weakness of our electoral system. The integrity of the system that uh, chooses leaders into this house is the core and fundamental thing that needs to be fixed for all development to rest upon. Deputy Speaker, strategy measures must be put in place by the Parliament before the next set of elections in order to restore voters' confidence and enhance their uh, electoral credibility. My question is, can the Prime Minister enlighten the people of this country if the government is seriously looking at biometric voting system in 2027 national general election and all elections thereafter? Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Acting Speaker. Uh, Mila Aksok, thank you, Long. Question Long, Member Long. Uh, Talasea, uh, I confirm his view that the voting process is important for our country, uh, and we have to tidy the space. 
Mila give him assurance law, Emos, and government law, and yet, and government law, you may be serious long fixing this issue, but you may cut him come long time. One of my core statements of commitment to our country when I took office again in this term of parliament was to give assurance that we will look into the entire weaknesses and deficiencies we carry in the electoral process to tidy so that. Uh, that could become one of our generational uh, gifts uh, to entrench our democracy on the 50th anniversary of our nationhood. Uh, it is really in this vein that we've now set up a minister who not, uh, uh, does not uh, uh, accept my role as a uh, prime minister responsible for constitutional offices, but he assists me in the administration of matters that deals with certain constitutional offices that are important to our, our, our democracy and our country. Uh, key amongst them is us also uh, responding to the parliamentary committee on the on the review on elections conducted. And I want to commend the uh, uh, chairman chief of government there, who also had a look at the, what happened in the 2022 elections. So we are now ha having the new minister for administrative services. Uh, he has ha will have a handle on the census we will do this year. We will want to integrate the census into having an NID system that is uniform, an NID system that picks on um, um, people identification from the one, one population database. And it is from this population database that we want to uh, also uh, uh, develop the common role. And the commitment we have made to our country is that uh, by 2027, there must be some form of ID based, whether it's a biometric ID or a, or a hard ID uh, for people to have ID to front up picking up a ballot paper and to go to go to vote. Uh, that is a commitment we have given to this country in PNG. Every person in this country must be identified. And on the basis of this identification, we want to go into our ID-based voting in 2027. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Deputy Opposition Leader. Thank you, Acting Speaker. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, my question without notice goes to uh, the good Prime Minister, who is currently also the Treasurer. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, currently Papua New Guineans are going through a cost of living crisis uh, where they're struggling to afford basic keikai like uh, tin fish and rice. My question to the good uh, Treasurer, my, good, uh, my question to the good Treasurer, who's, what's our target uh, for inflation uh, for 2024? What's the plan to achieve that target and how will this impact on the cost of living crisis currently faced by ordinary Papua New Guineans? Thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. The Honourable Treasurer and Prime Minister. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the Deputy Opposition Leader for asking a very important question. Inflation is not just unique to Papua New Guinea. Especially in an import-dependent economy like PNG over many, many years, where even basic food items like rice we keep on importing, uh, protein we keep on importing, and this government on our side have been working hard for import substitution. We note Minister Maru's drive to ramp up rice production in our country and to replace the food that we import at the very earliest. In response to his last question, we expect inflation in PNG to be around 5%, higher than global average at 4%. But last year and previous year, our inflation that was around 5% and below at 5 6%, <coughs> lower than global inflation average. The fact that we are able to give the highest ever tax relief in our nation's history that ensures that over 100,000 low-income earners under earning under 20,000 don't pay tax anymore. The last time a relief similar of nature has been given was by the PNC administration. So, Mr. Deputy Speaker, Acting Speaker, we know our people are going through hard times. Our constructive budget 2021, budget 2022, budget 2023, and now budget 2024 as elements of subsidy and support to our people in hard times to mitigate the increase in price as a result of inflation in country that is also contributed by inflation that is imported externally. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have a supplementary. Uh, you speak, uh, provincial member. Thank you. Thank you, Acting Speaker. Uh, let me, first of all, uh, on behalf of the people of Papua New Guinea, appreciate the 
assistance that's been given by the government thus far. But I think the point that is being asked is how much further can you go? And really the question is what's happening between the fiscal policy and the monetary policy in order to bring these costs down? Whilst you are giving some relief to 100,000 Papua New Guineans who are working, I remind the Prime Minister that we have 14 million Papua New Guineans at least in that country. So the question from the opposition is what are you doing in terms of uh, monitoring and in fact merging fiscal and monetary policies so that we can work these two together to bring inflation down whilst appreciating the fact that inflation is increasing around the world. Thank you, Mr. The Honourable Prime you. Minister. All right, Mr. Acting Speaker, I want to appreciate the uh, supplementary question. Uh, monetary policy and fiscal policy work in tandem, but on this side of the House, we don't intend to uh, dig deeper into the independence of the monetary policy. Monetary policy is governed by the central bank. They assist the fiscal policy. They are twin anchor uh, policies that, should, that, that keeps the economy in check and balance going forward. Uh, we're working closely with the central bank. Uh, I want to uh, put to, uh, to, uh, to you, Mr. Acting Speaker, that the fact that Kina has now been allowed to free flow on the market, on its own, the strength of its own value. Uh, this is not strictly an IMF-directed free float of Kina. Uh, Kina must, is, must find its place on the market. Uh, some years back, in fact, possibly uh, uh, 2015, 2016, the unholy alliances of the Office of Prime Minister and Central Bank saw Kina artificially pegged. Kina artificially pegged. Kina must not be artificially pegged. Kina must allow to free flow on the market. Now, for the and our government on this side consciously allow for Kina to go back to its market value, so that on this side we have a policy that is strongly focused. And Governor, I want to say, the Governor uh, uh, Governor Bed finds comfort on the other side. He should be more on this side, uh, simply because of focus on rural economy to be unleashed. Uh, we gave, for instance, the support for the 300 million Kina European Union Partnership Program in East Sipik and West Sipik. Later, it will be expanded to Momas and rest of the country so that our growers, our growers can be growing cacao and, and, the, and the produce of the land. In a time when Kina value comes down, we expect remittance from earnings of export to come in. They get better value for Kina coming to the economy. They get better value for Kina coming to the economy. And uh, we're managing, we, we're cautious of the effect of uh, 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 the Kina being placed on its strength of its value on the market. At the moment, I want to uh, uh, advise our country that the Kina seems to be coming down. There will be a time when Kina hits its natural level, and we expect production from Octeti, production and air ramp up. This week, Friday, Mr. Uh, Acting Speaker, I want to announce to this House, this week, Friday, I'm invited to go to Pogra for the first ever gold pour. First ever gold pour to the many prophets of doom on the other side. Uh, not those who just went on the other side recently, but the hardcore on the other side. Uh, the hardcore on the other side who think Pogra will never be reopened. Today under a better benefit sharing arrangement that is far better than Lihir, far better than any other resource project ever negotiated. Pogra gold for the first time will be poured this week, Friday, first gold poured. When the earnings from these resources come back into our country, Kina will then appreciate its natural place. There's a fine balance within Kina and its natural place that gives value to export earning more Kina into our country and imports being paid at a lesser price. We are not economic illiterates running this country, Mr. Acting Speaker.